Please rise for the opening song. Hail the day that sees him rise. Alleluia. To his throne beyond the skies. Alleluia. Christ the Lamb for sinners given. Alleluia. Enters now the highest heaven. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit be with you all. We celebrate today the Feast of the Ascension, our deeply rooted belief that Jesus is united with the Father after uh, his work on earth, in a certain sense, was finished, but as we will discover next weekend on the Feast of Pentecost, because the Spirit is alive and active and well and working among us, Jesus' work here is never finished. So we celebrate the oneness that he has with the Father and that same experience of oneness with God that you and I cherish so deeply. Lord Jesus, you were sent to save us from selfishness and sin. Lord, have mercy. You ascend to the Father that you might open our hearts to the power of your promise. Christ, have mercy. We cherish the gift of your spirit that enlivens us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth.
Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called also to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the Apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. his throne to shouts of joy, a player of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a player of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts 
mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is, un that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. I was talking to somebody on the phone the other day. She was all excited because she had driven past Uncle Mike's Bakery in Green Bay and picked up their flavor of the day cheesecake. And she said, oh, and I'm waiting until this evening and I'm just uh, enjoying the anticipation. And I said, uh, I'll uh, call you later tonight, find out how it was. So I called her later and I said, how was the cheesecake? And she said, oh, she said, it was out of this world. 
I said, well, it can't be out of this world. All the ingredients came from this world. They came from mostly dairy, from Bessie out in the field. And uh, we had a, had a nice chat, but we often say that about something really delicious that's out of this world. Another wrinkle to out of this world is, in my experience, flying in an airplane. The very first time I was ever in an airplane in my life was in 1971, and my first flight was from O'Hare to Frankfurt, Germany. I was never in a little puddle jumper at the county fair or anything else. My first flight was like seven, eight hours from Chicago to Frankfurt. It was thrilling. I can still feel the excitement of, of that initial takeoff. But I was scared to death. I, am, I do not like heights. So airplanes and I do not make happy companions. Plus, today, they've shrunk or they've added more seats or something, so there's no leg room. I really don't enjoy flying, but I love to travel. And so I have to uh, suffer through the flight in order to get um, where I want to go. I remember the first time Neil Armstrong was on the moon and others. And I remember where I was, July 20th, 21st, 1969. I remember I was at a cottage, at Greg Fisher's cottage up in northern Wisconsin, and we watched it and it was it was so exciting. Now given my fear of flying, when somebody says to me, if you had the chance, would you go to the moon? And I probably would. I probably would. There's probably more leg room in that little module than uh, there is on an average airplane. 75 hour flight from Earth to the moon. I'm thinking of all those kinds of experiences and expressions because the Feast of the Ascension in somehow imprints in our minds Jesus flying to the moon, flying beyond the moon, Jesus taking off and, and leaving us, kind of like Superman, that Jesus just stood on a hill somewhere outside Jerusalem and flew off into outer space never to return. He's living out of this world. And those images so distract us from what we are really celebrating today. God would not have graced our world with Jesus' presence if he were only to spend a few years on this planet and then have it be over. Jesus is in this world whenever and wherever he lives through us. He is still here. Now, in our Catholic tradition, of course, his preeminent presence is in the Eucharist that we share. Transubstantiating bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. But that miracle and that grace and that power also occurs in us in, in an analogous sort of way. We are also transubstantiated into the living body of Christ. We become Jesus in our world. And that is why we no longer extinguish the Easter candle after the gospel reading on the Feast of the Ascension. He is not gone. He has not flown beyond the moon. 
whenever you and I embody him in our love, in our forgiveness, in our generosity, in our humility, he is present. The risen Christ has not left. Whenever you and I turn the water of boredom into the wine of joy, whenever our love becomes contagious and our one loaf feeds thousands, whenever you and I make the right choice rather than the easy choice, when we champion a cause that benefits others rather than ourselves, when we walk over or on the water that threatens to overwhelm us. Jesus is here. He didn't take a one-way flight somewhere. He is both with the Father and still among us. That is the mystery. That is the miracle. And no wonder Jesus wants us to remain childlike because only a child could embrace that mystery and that miracle of being with the Father and still being among us and not question it. To embrace the mystery is the foundation of who we are as disciples. There was a mom who volunteered to take meals and, and do visits um, to people who are confined to their homes. And uh, during the summer months, back when kids were in school, during the summer months, she'd take her little four-and-a-half-year-old daughter along with her. And uh, the little girl was just delighted to see all these older folks and to visit with them and uh, her mom said now it's hard for them to hear so talk loud and all of that you know and she was wonderful and she'd share a cookie with them and it was just all all over this being helpful and she was the little girl intrigued by all the various appliances the canes the walkers the wheelchairs and the rest well one day the mom noticed that she was kind of quiet and she looked and here her little daughter was staring wide-eyed at a glass of water that had the lady's teeth in it. And she's looking at that and looking at that and thinking to herself, oh my goodness. And the mom is thinking, oh, am I going to get a barrage of questions now? But not a question. She just pulled on her mom's shirt sleeve and whispered to her mom, the tooth fairy will never believe this. <laughs> the risen, ascended Christ is not the tooth fairy. And yet, in a crazy, convoluted kind of way, there are similarities because we can't see him, but he still gifts us particularly when we lose something or someone much more important than a tooth. We need the simple faith of a four-year-old this day to believe that Jesus ascending to the Father is not an act of abandonment, but of love, because it makes possible for him to be present among all people of every age and every place, not limited by time and space to a specific location in Palestine where he resided. May we see him, touch him, hear him through the love that we share this week, all the while awaiting the Spirit on Pentecost who will energize and excite us beyond our imagining to be people of great love.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, from whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. Rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith-filled hearts and confident assurance in God's promise, we turn and offer our prayers in the name and in the person of the risen Christ. For the church, that empowered by the Spirit, we may faithfully give witness to the gospel and continue Christ's mission of bringing hope and healing to those in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in every parish, that they may develop wise practices as public gatherings resume, and that many hearts may be open to assisting in the parish in new ways, so that everyone who comes to church may be safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world, that God will turn the hearts of world leaders from violence toward cooperation, in facing the challenges that confront all the human race. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all assembled here and watching from afar, that through the words of Jesus and the example of the early disciples, we may discover who we are as disciples of Jesus and help others to come to know the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of this weekend, for Stan and Mary Smogoleski, Ralph Plyer, and for all the people of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving, that Christ would dry their tears and give them peace as they experience the death of a loved one or loss of a relationship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly those who have served our nation, that God will welcome them into the company of the saints forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers on our prayer line, in our prayer basket, and those we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good St. Joseph, as you led the Holy Family, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our bishop, and our priests. May they follow your example in their fatherly care for the people of God, the Church. Mary, you raise Jesus the high priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests, <coughs> our families, to serve the people of our diocese. 
Our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good St. Joseph, pray for us. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Hosanna, 
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this offering of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, his God, the Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the many gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, in the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and we extend the peace of Christ to all of you who are praying today together, and let us open our hearts to that promise of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go forth as the living body of Christ. Thanks be to God. It's mighty.